Ware from the Lynn Item, Carrie Schoen from the Lynn Journal, John Hoffman, of course. John's the best. He's been doing this type of thing for 30 years, and we'd be lost without him. John Hoffman and crew, thank you very much. Also, I'd like to thank the staff members of the Nahan Country Club. They do a great job every year, and once again, you put out a great meal. Thank you for your hospitality. We do have a special guest tonight, someone that has been involved with this program for many, many years. This evening and all the younger ones we've done previously, it wouldn't happen without her. This is the first time she's been for various reasons. I can't thank her enough, but I want to thank her publicly. Will Chris Pisanelli please stand up? She makes this whole thing work. Thank you so much, Chris. We'd be lost without you. And also, I want to, Billy Devin, for those of you who don't know him, he's the athletic director at Lynn Classical. And once again, Lynn Classical is having a banner year. The football team had a great season. Both basketball teams, men and women, made the playoffs. Tennis is doing well. Baseball is doing well. It's never been better at Lynn Classical. Thanks to Billy's direction and the coaches under him. Billy, thank you for everything you do for Lynn Classical. Before I introduce the inductees tonight, I just want to give you a quick history of some of the athletes, premier athletes that have played at Lynn Classical. You've heard about most of them, but I always like to bring it up because you're going to be in the same club that they're in, the Hall of Fame. First, we all know Harry Aganis, his senior year in high school, 40,000 high schools in the country. He was the number one high school athlete in the country his senior year in high school. Okay, um, he went to BU, signed with the Red Sox, but that same year, he also got drafted by the Cleveland Browns, and uh, they were drafting him, hoping to replace Otto Grand, but Harold Zimmerman, who's in the Hall of Fame, was a member of the Olympic Committee for 35 years. He said prior to Harry Gannis getting sick, he was in the process of negotiating with the Cleveland Browns, and he was gonna become the first Bo Jackson. Okay, he was going to play football, baseball, then switch over and play for the Cleveland Browns, go to training camp the following year, but we all know there's sudden death, sad and death, but uh, he would have been the first Bo Jackson. Bowley Dancewitz, Lynn Classical graduate, starting quarterback for Notre Dame for three years. Okay, I don't know if people follow the NFL draft. I'm a draft Nick. I, I love it every year. Bowley Dancewitz, in 1946, was the number one draft pick in the NFL. So here we have a Lynn Classical guy got drafted number one in the NFL draft. Also, other people we've had, Dr. Nicholas Zervis, who was the head of neurosurgery at Mass General, head of, president of Boston Symphony, Symphony Orchestra. We inducted him into the Hall of Fame. And he's one of the foremost authorities in the world in his field. He came to the event and he just said, this means more to me I go all over the world being inducted to the Hall of Fame. Thank you so much. These are the type of guys that are going in. Tony Thurman, first team All-American at Boston College. His brother, Eddie, who's the MVP, Holy Cross. <laughs> and captain. Stu Primus, played at Boston College. Final eight once, final 16, sweet 16 twice. Got drafted by the Indiana Pacers. Art Akers. His class, which Junior Guy is part of, they've really brought relevancy back to Lynn sports and North Shore sports. Arthur's senior year, he was a first team parade All-American. Every team in the country. One week we had Joe Paterno, Woody Hayes, John Robinson, all down at Classical. But the most important thing, when Arthur graduated his senior year, he won the Jackie Robinson Award for the best senior athlete with the highest GPA. Arthur, will you stand up and say hello? He was a starting linebacker for UCLA for three years. We've had Olympians, a hockey Olympian, a soccer Olympian, 
Uh, we've had uh, professors at Harvard, Yale. We have a well-rounded group of excellence. And don't let's not forget Kenny Hill, who's in our Hall of Fame, 14 years as a major league pitcher. And every time Kenny took that mound, he, he pitched in the World Series. He's a runner-up in the Cy Young. My heart was beating a mile a minute because I was his coach in Legion Baseball, and I'm just so proud of him to take it and have that type of a career. So these are the type of people you're joining in your induction into the Hall of Fame. First candidate, first inductee tonight from the class of 2005, Alvin Abreu. Alvin was a senior MVP in the Northeastern Conference All-Star Game, in the Harry Gannis All-Star Game, went to prep school, got a full scholarship to UNH. Was a four-year starter there, three-year three -year captain. When he graduated, he was the third, third leading scorer in the history of UNH. He, was, he played in Europe for five years, he got a master's degree along the way. Now he's got a good job for Bank America, and he's working hard, and he's climbing that ladder. Please put your hands together for Alvin Abreu. Few notes here. <clears throat> First off, I want to thank um, the committee for selecting me to be a part of this prestigious group. Um, I'll be honest with you. When I heard, when I received notice that I was even nominated yet, you know, to be inducted, I was I was shocked. I was shocked because in this you you have a short term memory, so it brought me back to where it all started. Um, so I just want to say thank you to the, the committee, the school, and those who um, played a role in, in inducting me into the Hall of Fame. Um, speaking about where it all started, um, I actually, I went to middle school on the, on, in East Lynn. I was in... I know, not a good start. Um, that's, that's how I felt, actually, when my mother, I live down the street on Chatham, and she tells me I got to go across town to Classical. I'm like, my sister and I, we were like, why? Like, we went to Ingalls, we went to Marshall. The next step, the expectation is to go to Lynn English, right? And she said she's a Classical alum herself. Um, and it's, it all starts there. Um, moms know the decisions for their child, and may, even if you may or may not understand them, but it worked out for the best. Um, as leading up to this, um, I'm YouTubing, you know, speeches and stuff like that. Like, guys are texting me, asking me, are you ready? I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm ready, I'm ready. And then I'm YouTubing last night, this morning, just speeches, and I'm like, I'm just gonna speak from inside. I think it's the best way. Um, like I mentioned, my mother was, was, was key. She was key in, in raising three of us. I'm the middle child. You know how that can be. Um, <laughs> and she, she pretty much instilled the hard work ethic in us. Um, she, she was a single mother raising three, and she, she instilled that. Just She modeled that on a day-to-day -day basis. She, I get my strength from her. I get my work ethic from her. I get my inspiration from her. She's our superwoman of the family. Um, when we made it to classical, you know, it was it was new to me. Previous to classical, in middle school, I had been cut from my basketball team twice. So maybe it was a good decision to go to classical because it, it may or may not happen in English. And a person I would like to thank when I first got there, when I tried out for the team, was J James Kebrew. Coach Kebrew, he believed in me. And that I, prom I made a promise to myself, may he rest in peace. Um, I made a promise to myself that I was, it was my last tryout. It was my last tryout when I made it to classical, and he believed in me. 
and he, he instilled in us a work ethic that I remember my first practice he said if you if you cut my vein right here it's gonna bleed green and gold and I swore if he cut it green and gold was gonna come out of that I swear it was it was definitely something that and that's where his passion came from he worked us he and and, and also so I want to thank him also he had spoken to our coach Marcos Echeverria who himself had a, a glorious career with with Lynn Classical he brought championships to the school a Hall of Famer in my eyes and he he led the way James Creeper had a conversation with him as far as I got this guy, you know, come check him out and maybe he might be able to go to on varsity and him along with Coach Grasa, you know, gave me the opportunity to join the varsity staff. Um, also, another coach I would like to thank is Coach Kenny Turner. Um, they, these are coaches that, and Coach Hop as well, the whole coaching staff, Coach Grasa, you guys played a major role of where all this started for myself. Um, gave me the opportunity to grow as a as a young young adult, and um, I, I I can't thank you enough for that. Um, it's it's pretty much I'm nervous. I am nervous. Um, you, <laughs> you you put me out first. <laughs> And pretty much this, this is just a reflection of, of my family. My family of this accolade goes to all my coaches. This goes to my mother. It goes to my son, Xavier, who's been my motivation, um, as well as I have another baby boy that's on the way. Um, so he's. <laughs> so I just want on behalf of my family and myself, I just want to give thanks to everyone along the way. Um, they say like when you really want something, the universe will work his way, work its way to get you what you want. It's gonna put people, it's gonna put opportunities, it's gonna put circumstances and challenging and not and and for you to get there. And everyone had a piece in that path with me, and I'm grateful. I am definitely grateful. So it's I wanna say thank you to you all who played a major part in in this Hall of Fame. So I, I want you guys to all accept that with me. Uh, so congratulations to you all as well. From the class of 1974, Dennis Baldini was a Northeastern Conference All-Star in cross country, winter and spring track. He was a team captain for all three years. He ran track in college, and he coached at Lynn Classical in conjunction with Gene Constantino to a perfect 20-0 record back in 2003. Please welcome Dennis Baldini for this year's induction into the Classical Hall of Fame. myself at this age, what would ever possess a young man in high school to run long distances along the North Shore, particularly with the weather we have here, all year round? Well, my inspiration came from watching the world-class elite athletes of the late 1960s and early 1970s. Jim Ryan, Kip Kano, Frank Shorter, Dave Waddle, my personal favorite, always ran with a golf cap. You always knew where he was. You didn't need the announcer to tell you. And of course, Steve Prefontaine. I am very honored, grateful, and deeply humbled to be recognized here tonight. Thank you to the Hall of Fame Selection Committee for the nod of approval, and particularly Honored to be here with such accomplished individuals. Anything that I did in track many years ago, with the exceptional and nurturing guidance of Coach Bonnie Bloom, who we all love, was not as a result of anyone telling me to go to practice, practice on my own, or go to meets. 
Fortunately, I found a constructive outlet that I could persevere earnestly and do well at. This lesson taught me that if I continue to work in earnest towards a passion, that I could apply this in adulthood. And I think it carried over to working as a contract administrator at General Electric, also teaching in Saugus as a special educator, and coaching basketball in Lynn for 25 years, including 10 years at Lynn Classical in the girls' basketball program under coaches Gene Constantino and Coach Sawyer. Thank you to both of you for the opportunity. Thank you everyone that attended tonight. I appreciate it. And congratulations, fellow inductees. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Welcome. From the class of 1980, one class, we've all heard of the Fab Five at Michigan. Well, Lynn Classical had their own five back, Fab Five back in 1980. Perhaps, I, mean, I know for sure it's the best team ever in the history of the North Shore, maybe the state. Okay, they had a team that went 25-0 and and won the state championship. As a matter of fact, they were the Division II champions, and they played the Division I champions, Cambridge Ridge and Latin, who pa had Patrick Ewing, and a face-off over Revere, and this Lynn Classical team beat that Cambridge team by 20 points. And Merrill Brown was an important member of that team. He played basketball at Framingham State, and he still coaches to this day, he coaches Special Olympics. Let's put our hand together for Merrill Brown, a member of the greatest basketball team in the history of Lynn, the 1980 Lynn Classical 25 and 0 state champions. Good evening, folks. Um, I didn't write a speech. <laughs> Gonna be brief. Um, it all started, um, I was born in an, an island called Trinidad. When I first came to this country, didn't know a thing about basketball, but kicking a ball, that's not basketball. Um, had some good friends that I grew up with Poncho, He's my best friend, Eddie Thurman, his brother. A couple other guys that are not here. They were like my best friends. But the most important thing, besides winning the state championship, is growing up with these guys, teaching me to love each other, um, black or white. They know there was prejudice until I hung around with these guys, black, you know, going to their homes. Their mom would um, accept me as another kid. And I love that. They'll be my, they'll be my heart forever. Thanks to my beautiful wife, my beautiful grandkids, my beautiful kids. Um, going on in classical was a joy. When I played basketball in classical, there were other guys that was super great, but my job was to rebound, make sure they get the ball, make sure they scored, and I loved doing it. I would not tra tra trade that for anything in the world, and I appreciate being nominated some of you great people here today, and thank you so much for having me as part of this alumni. From the class of 1948, just to think about that, from the class of 1948, that's 71 years ago. One of our inductees going in tonight. Let me tell you about Joe Carlina, a special guy. How many world champions have you ever had graduate from classical? One, Joe Carlina. Joe Carlina, over a five or six year period, was the number one bowler in the world, candlepin bowler in the world. He went all over the world to bowl, took on all comers, 
and he was the best there was. After a certain point, he switched to 10-pin bowling, and he was equally great. He's in two bowling Hall of Fames, the Candlepin Hall of Fame, and the 10-pin Hall of Fame, but he's a legendary guy, and I'm thrilled at 88 years old, graduated 71 years ago from Lynn Classical. Let's put, give a big round of applause to Joe Kalina, class of 1948. This will be short and sweet, <laughs> really. <laughs> and I thank the committee, whatever gave them the idea that I should be up here with, with this whole gang. And at first, when I got the, the notification, I didn't think a whole lot of it. I says, <laughs> so what is that? <laughs> but now, the last two or three or four weeks, uh, I became excited and really proud to be here. And I remember LCHS on the Commons. If you can remember those days. <laughs> on the Commons. And it was a great school. And, but I got a little note here I have to read because <laughs> I, I forgot my glasses. <laughs> this is unbelievable. <laughs> No, 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 I, I, I was just joking. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, yeah. but you know, the, the one thing, uh, although I have three of us in the Hall of Fame at this time, Scott, and you'll see Michael later on, but I think the one that should be up here is uh, my sweetheart. <laughs> Stand up. Stand up. She, she, she's the one that did all the work, and we take all the credit. Thank you very much. For the first time ever in the history of the Hall of Fame, which we started 28 years ago, we're having a father and son both here being inducted. Last, when we did it two years ago, we had Dan McNulty and his late father, Robert, be inducted. But this time, for the first time ever, we have a father and son combination, and they're both here. From the class of 74, Mike Collini was a three-sport athlete at Lynn Classical. He got an athletic scholarship. He played football at AIC. He was involved with a lot of charity work, went all over the country. But at one point, he's got the job everyone would love to have. Mike Kalina is the executive in charge of all construction for Disney World. <laughs> Mike, Kalina, Mike Kalina built the Disney World in, in Shanghai, Hong Kong, France, all over the world. He's built them all, all the resorts, all their amusement parks. So let's put our hands together and give a big welcome for Mike Kalina. <laughs> Mike is also going to be the graduation speaker at this year's Lynn Classical commencement on uh, May 31st. Thank you, Dan, and thank you, Selection Committee. First of all, what a tough act to follow. I've had to follow that to my whole life. Uh, it's an honor to be here tonight and be inducted into the Hall of Fame, but more so 
because I'm being inducted into the class of 2019, which is being led by my dad, Joe Kalina. In addition, I'll be the third Kalina inducted, followed by my younger brother, Scott, who was part of the 1976 Super Bowl champs. And I heard Thurman, and I heard Akers, and I heard all those names, but Thanksgiving Day, Lynn Classical English. MVP, Scott Kalina. <laughs> uh, I want to thank my, my girlfriend, Leela, who's come out from California. Uh, I was a little concerned about attendance until my dad was being inducted. In fact, Leela was on the fence about even coming until she found out my dad was being inducted. Uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, my older brother, Rick, my sister, Barbara Ann, my younger sister, Nancy, and of course, Scott, thank you, all of your families for coming out. I really appreciate it. I've got three really close friends here I want to thank personally. Rick Killikis, his wife, Deanna, are here from Southern California. Rick was the captain of the 1974 football team. John Nadworny, his wife, Susan, their son, James, are here. John and I were co-captains of the golf team in 1974. I think John was the captain of the hockey team. He played football, and he was on the bowling team. He's the only person I know that had lettered in four sports. And of course, John McNulty is in the house. <laughs> captain, 1975, went on to Plymouth State. John and I this year will be running our 45th Falmouth Road Race. Couple special thanks, people on here. Uh, Coach Bill Wise, uh, he was instrumental in guiding me to the right college for me, which was American International College. Dan is also an alumni of AIC, so thank you to Coach Wise. Uh, and a mentor of mine, a immigrant from Yugoslavia, Rudy Ijojic, uh, gave me my first career job in 1980. So I always think about Rudy. We worked all over the country and all over the world together. Mom and Dad. I have traveled, worked, and lived in well over 30 countries on four continents. And I can unequivocally say that growing up on 29 Gateway Lane <laughs> in West Lynn with you as my parents and road models, role models, I grew up absolutely privileged. I love you both very much. And a little bit of housekeeping, a little bit of housekeeping. You had mentioned dad, you had mentioned mom, she was the star and all of that. Yes, but my dad, Mr. Grand Slam, had four world titles at one time. What people don't realize is one of those titles was mixed doubles. My dad's partner in mixed doubles was my mom, Barbara. So you had said earlier, there's only one world champion in the Hall of Fame. And what I've seen tonight, not many women either. So tonight, I'm formally nominating <laughs> my mom for the Hall of Fame class of 2020. Thank you very much. Our next inductee is no stranger to the Lynn Classical Hall of Fame. He's been on the board for the Hall of Fame for many, many years. And as a graduate of Lynn Class School, I can't thank him enough. He did as his role for what he did as his role as a principal for nine years at Lynn Class School. He, he worked as a guidance counselor, uh, special ed teacher, vice principal, principal. He gave his heart and soul to bring Lynn Class School to stand at that the, new, the uh, U.S. World and News Report, uh, two years in a row, voted Lynn Classical as one of the top public schools in the country. Nick, Nick Carson started it. Gene Constantino picked it up. So, Gene, thank you for everything you've done. He's from Medford, so he's not a Lynn guy. But thank you for everything you've done for Lynn Classical and the Lynn community all these years. He's also a great basketball coach. Led Lynn Classical to a 20-0 record, state finals, and uh, just a great all-around guy. I'm lucky to have him as a friend, and we're lucky to have him as someone that put all that time into Lynn Classical.
Thank you, Danny. I want to thank everyone on the committee for this humbling selection. They didn't invite me to be on the committee this year, so I kind of had a hint, maybe. Um, I retired last year after a lot of years at Classical. Uh, my friend Dan Dill reminded me that the selection wasn't from a basketball coaching record. Even though we were Classical's first team to go undefeated in the regular season, and up until last year, under my good friend Tom Sawyer, the only team to win a Northeast Conference championship for girls. Of course, we like to say in those days it was only one division, but that's okay because Tom was my assistant coach. My introduction to Lynn Classical started in 1981 when we brought a group of 18 to 21 year old developmentally delayed special needs students to Classical for the first time. Danny and I were actually the youngest teachers in the school at that time. We both were in special ed. I remember our principal, Mr. Charlie Connolly, being very nervous and concerned. And he, he suggested that the bus drop the students off in the back of the school. We said, no, we can make it from the front to the back. Well, Mr. Connolly became a best friend of the class. He visited us every day after about a couple of weeks. He got used to us, as all the classical students did. The classical, there's a tradition that continues today. The students at classical volunteered to come down and work with our special needs students. And this continues today. The focus of the program was to prepare students for jobs. I remember recently I went to, to uh, Shaw's Market in Salem and I saw my, my former student, George, and it took him a little while to recognize me. I haven't seen him in a while. And the one thing he said is, we lost at Thanksgiving. But, and he's still working today, 40 years later, 30 years later. Um, as a guidance counselor, I got to interact with so many outstanding teachers and students. It was there that I first learned that the classical teachers really went out of their way to help and guide so many students in a most positive way. I was mentored by some of the great counselors, Barbara Desmaris, Bill Mahoney, who's here this evening, and the late Bobby Witcher. Being the girls' basketball coach for 19 years was a most rewarding experience. Of course, my friend Matt Durgan said my qualifications for the job was that I had Celtic season tickets. <laughs> Truth be told, no one else wanted the job because they had not won a game in several years. It took us three years to get a victory, but each year after that, we improved. Kristen Bakers, Maureen Magna, Nicole Foisette, Helen Ridley, Takia Faison, Paula McGinn, Monique Lee, and Tanika Brown somehow made me a better coach. Over time, and we competed in a very strong conference with Salem, Danvers, Swampscott, and others. Having great assistant coaches like Tom Sawyer, Dennis Baldini, Jimmy Ridley, Betsy Bell, Brian McDormand also made this a pleasant journey. And boy, were they helpful. I had two ADs during those years. George Gunning and Dick Ruth, both outstanding. They supported the girls' program during the dark days as well as the successful years. Becoming a vice principal under Principal Warren White was also very rewarding. What I learned from him and Ed Tona, who's also here this evening, was that my job wasn't to, uh, wasn't to just discipline, but it was to affect change. And I learned that, and it's something that we continue today at Classical. Being a principal for nine years was a wonderful experience. I was surprised and excited to be selected by Dr. Latham. After me, she picked about 10 women as her next jobs, but that, I think, I don't know what happened. But uh, I thanked her for her support, and Dr. Latham was always there in times of crisis. Getting to know Dr. Tutwiler, as he was a deputy superintendent, was an outstanding pleasure, and I was really looking forward to working with him as superintendent, but it was time for me to leave. Uh, Dr. Tutwell is doing an outstanding job. I consider him a good friend, and he really helped us during his time at Classical High School, and he continues to do that for the city. All right, where am I? Uh, we're working at it. Uh, I learned from every principal, Charlie Connolly, Peter Ossolanian, Nick Costin, Bill Frost, and Warren White, all very different in their approach, but one thing they always preached was take care of the students. That's what they always said to us, take care of the students. There was and is a special feel about classical high school. 
Students may be from different countries, speak another language, have dissimilar interests than many of us here today, but they all know that the adults in that building care about them succeeding just as they did when you attended. I was very lucky to have a great faculty and administrative team during my principal years. Dennis Thompson, Chris Warren, Amy Dunn helped me more than I could ever repay. Amy was my first hire and I never made a decision without consulting her and she's doing a great job now as principal. Those, those 330 meetings were so helpful. Thanks for talking me off the cliff and redirecting me when needed. Bill Devon, Bill Devon handled athletics during a time of realignment in our league and as you can see, the improvement in our sports has been outstanding. Bill Devon's a great athletic director. Thanks for all you do. <laughs> to the department heads, guidance counselors who work so hard every day, to the teachers who have done so much preparation and have so much accountability, thanks for all you do as well. I also had great administrative assistants, and I'm so happy she's here tonight, Chris Pisanelli, who rescued me for many situations, like the time I got my necktie stuck in the shredder and I was choking. She said, turn it off. <laughs> Classical is a family. You still have that tie? <laughs> Classical High is a family, it really is. Speaking of family, I wanna thank my family for coming here tonight. My children like to comment about the many times I wasn't around because I was at Classical and how I have plenty of green and gold but classical was part of their lives as well. My sons, John, Alex, and Luke, running layup drills with the entire team and coming to so many events. My daughter, Kara, wearing her Ram shirt and cheering with her pom-poms as we were losing in those early years, and then defending her father's team on social media if someone criticized the Lady Rams or the coach. I want to thank Alicia, Tyler, Sandra for coming, my sister, Susan, and of course, my fellow Hall of Fame wife, Sue. Thank you. From the class of 2001, State Senator Brenda Creighton. For the last 60 years, there's only been two state senators that are Lynn Classical graduates. The other ones, also in the Hall of Fame, the great late Senator Walter Bolverini. This year, Senator Creighton is one of the inductees. He played baseball, basketball, and track at Lynn Classical. He was the football captain his senior year. He played football at Kobe. He worked for Tom McGee when he first started his political career. And he went from ward counselor, state rep, now a state senator. He's doing a fabulous job. Please have a big round of applause for Senator Brendan Creighton, induction into the Lynn Classical Hall of Fame. Thanks for warming me up, T-Bone. Uh, best way to ruin a good party, give a politician a microphone. So uh, I'm sorry, I will be brief though. I will say that Gene Constantino, when I gave my commencement speech at Classical, gave me two words of advice. He said, be brief. Nobody cares what you have to say. Gene, that was anything less than brief. That was quite the speech and you're a tough act to follow, but um, no, it was beautiful. So uh, it, is, it is an honor to be here and I'm, I'm humbled. In, with the utmost sincerity to be in a room full of legends. I grew up in Westland and my whole life I heard stories of all the Lynn Classical teams of past. I look over there and see the 1976 Super Bowl champions and I can't name the whole roster, but my mother went to Classical during that time and uh, as a kid growing up, just such fans of the program. When I started at Classical, I, I had the pleasure of wearing number 88 all four years and as soon as I showed up to, this was the old Classical too, uh, it's, uh, one of the security guards, not security guards, student resource officers, whatever they're called, grabbed me and said, son, I need to talk to you, and I'm a nervous new kid there, and he said, you know what number you're wearing on your chest? And I said, it's 88, I'm like, it's a good number. He goes, that's Arthur Aker's number, so it's, it, it was an honor, and he said, you better wear that jersey right, and to be here uh, in this class is so special for me, 
and it's even more special to be brought in with my coach, Coach Matt Durgan, who came in as, you can clap for Matt too, that's good. He, his first year at Classical, 1997, was my first year at Classical, and I like to think we grew together, and he was far more than a football coach for me and so many other people. We spent so much time together, much more than just the football season, and uh, learned so much uh, about commitment and, and I think having mental toughness. So congratulations, Coach. It's, it's an honor to be in the same uh, class as you. Um, I'd also be remiss if I didn't mention some of my teammates who are, are brothers for the rest of my life. If I see you every week or if I don't see you for five years, I know that we're always part of the same family. So uh, to Peter Papp, who's here, CJ Myos, Ryan Hathaway, my co-captain, Tim Phelps, JP Guy, Tony Seaforth. I'm hoping not forgetting anybody, but uh, I love you guys, and it was an honor. I was so lucky to be part of the same teams uh, as you. And uh, to continue the, these uh, thoughts of appreciation and thanks, I, I really need to recognize my family who's here. To my dad, uh, Kevin, my mother, Diane, please stand up. We're gonna give you a round of applause for all your work. Um, it, uh, we were very lucky, as we said earlier, to grow up in Westland, and my parents always made sure that we knew the sky was the limit and that we could achieve anything we wanted to do, and to this day, I lean on them on a regular basis. My sister Kathleen is here. She had to grow up in a house with two brothers that were very close in age. She was seven years younger, and Kevin and I may have teamed up on you. We forced you to go to every sporting event possible, and I don't know how you put up with us, but Kathleen, I love you. Thank you so much for being here. My brother Kevin and his wife Irene can't be here tonight. They, Irene's brothers graduated from college, but Kevin, who, who was the captain the year after me, is was always an inspiration, but as the older brother, I had to compete with him on a regular basis, and uh, it was it was such a driving force for me, and I know I wouldn't be here without Kevin. And to my wife, Andrea, uh, I, I can't say enough about you, and I'm not kissing up by any means, but I love you to death, and <laughs> I'm not gonna be in the doghouse. No, I, 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 we were friends before we, you know, for uh, th thank you, uh, it's getting awkward up here. But uh, she's telling me to cut it. No, but we were. Y I, I lean on you on a regular basis, and I know it's not easy being married to a politician that has to give these speeches. But uh, I love you to death. We have a, a wonderful son, Nathaniel, at home, who's going to be a ram, despite what she may want. So if you could talk to her later on in the night, it'd be great. And we're expecting a, a daughter in uh, the fall. So. Uh, how much more time do I have here? Yeah, that's it, no, so, <laughs> I'm gonna wrap it up. But I, I can't say enough about growing up in West Lynn. We're an underdog city. My entire life, we always kind of had that chip on our shoulder that we knew the world was against us. And the lessons I learned at Lynn Classical from my teachers, from my coaches, from the faculty that were there, from my teammates, I can't, every single day of my life, from that time, moving forward, I've used those lessons, whether it's getting up to give a speech on the Senate floor or trying to get my son to get dressed before school. All those lessons that we learned at Classical really make us who we are, and I know I'm in a room full of fellow Rams, and it's, it's just such an honor, and I'll wrap it up there, but I love you all. Thank you. Have a great night. From the class of 1969, Mark Cullinan. Mark Cullinan has been the town manager for 25 years over in the Hunt. If you know anything about the town manager form of government, the average life expectancy, not life expectancy, but job expectancy for a town manager is uh, like three and a half years. We were fortunate in the Hunt to have Mark. He's an MIT graduate. He's one of the foremost authorities in the state. He's an expert in wetlands, DEP matters, and things like that. Uh, he was a senior in, in, at Classical when I was a sophomore. I graduated from Classical with his wife, Mary. But the most important thing about Mark is we have the cheapest taxes in the North Shore, and Mark, you did a super job for 25 years. So please put your hands together and welcome Mark Cullinan 
into the, this year's Classical Hall of Fame. Thank you, Danny, and, and thank you, everybody. Um, it's such a great honor to be here tonight. I can't tell you how thrilled I am with this award. You know, in my profession, sometimes we're given, uh, you know, a lot of citations and a lot of awards, but honestly, this is the most important one of my life. Um, I was a, I was, <laughs> I wanna thank the committee, and I wanna especially thank my good friend, Danny Dill. Um, for nominating me, you know, but most important is, you know, family. And, you know, I wasn't athletic. Um, I'm up here to ex accept this um, lifetime, lifetime Achievement Award. My family, my mother, my brothers and sisters are here. My, my children are here. And my girlfriend, Sue, is here. Um, thank you for all your support. But we're all up here for one reason. Well, you know, anyone who is successful in life has someone behind them. And I had, as Danny mentioned, um, my, late, my, my late wife, Mary O'Malley, um, a graduate of um, class of 71, correct? Um, Mary was an outstanding student at, um, at Lynn Classical Honor Society. She is a leader in women's health care. Uh, I want to accept this award on her behalf. Um, Mary left a lot of footstep, uh, footprints in, in life, and one was in Lynn Public Schools. She started the, um, the teen, uh, the girls' health centers at all the high schools in Lynn um, and supported that. She went on from there and um, was the director of the birthing center at Salem Hospital. Um, from there, went to um, Harvard Vanguard in Boston, um, worked at Leahy Clinic and Brigham and Women's Hospital. Um, and despite her late nights and the many rounds that she made, she always ended up at Rosie's Place in, in Boston, which is a homeless um, um, nonprofit for homeless women and she started a women's health care program there. So if anyone deserves a Lifetime Achievement Award, my late wife Mary does. And so I'm gonna accept, <laughs> I would like to just accept this award on behalf of her. And thank you very much. You know, I graduated from high school with his wife. She was a very special woman. From the class of 2008, she's a four-year st starter on the varsity softball, three-year Northeastern Conference All-Star, four-time item All-Star, four-time Holland Tournament All-Star, the Northeastern Conference MVP. Uh, she played varsity softball at Bentley, and she was a great student. She had a 4.0. Now she works at Lynn Classical, Please give a big welcome to Afton Dean. Uh, Dr. Smith, are you link for? Good evening. I want to begin by sincerely thanking the selection committee for this tremendous honor. I would like to congratulate my fellow inductees on hand tonight with a special shout out to Jean Constantino, who is my guidance counselor and an amazing mentor. I want to thank all of my family and friends on it in attendance tonight as well. There are so many people that have made this night possible. I want to specifically thank my parents for their tremendous support and unconditional love. Of course, their support did not come without some bumps along the way. What is the key to most players' success? Practice, practice, and more practice. However, there were some days when I tested my parents' patience with my practice sessions. This includes breaking the window in the backyard when attempting to make a Nomar Garcia power off-balance throw. The Red Sox shortstop was my childhood idol. 
And as we know, winters in New England can be tough for softball players. My mom quickly found that out when her vase was on the short end of some indoor living room batting practice. I would also like to extend gratitude to my brother who played a pivotal role in my development as an athlete. I would like to recognize all of the coaches that I was fortunate to have throughout my playing career. And I would be remiss if I did not give a special thank you to Coach Warren. <laughs> Coach Warren, you were unique, not because you wore batting gloves or you were the only softball coach who hit ground balls with a wooden fungo. You were always there for your players and always pushed us to reach our potential on an individual and team level. The results are proof. During my senior season, the softball team captured its first conference title in 26 years. Some of you may not know, but I am a teacher at Lynn Classical and Coach Warren is the current vice principal. Even with the busy workday, we always find time to reminisce about our mes best memories on the field. Furthermore, I wanna thank my teammates for putting me in a position to be successful. Softball is a team sport and every individual holds an important piece of the puzzle. Playing with those teammates comes many lifelong memories. Who can forget the 12 inning marathon game in the 2007 Holland Tournament? The annual preseason trips to Cape Cod? The 2006 spring training trip to Disney World? And pulling off an upset over Newton South in the state tournament? Just a few of many countless memories. Lastly, I wanna thank the entire classical community. Every journey has a starting point and I will always bleed green and gold. I learned many valuable lessons throughout my time as a student athlete. No bigger than hard work conquers all. This is a philosophy that will continue to carry me throughout every chapter in my life and also something that I try to instill in my own students. Thank you and as always, go Rams. And now one of the crowd's favorite. From the class of 1984, the legendary Lynn coach, Matt Durgan. <laughs> Matt played football at URI. He coached here as a graduate assistant in 1989. Then he went on to coach at Maine Central Institute. He coached at Lynn Classical, uh, where he's a very successful coach, Malden Catholic. St. Mary's, he won multiple championships at his various stopovers. He was voted into the St. Mary's Hall of Fame in 2018, the Aganis Hall of Fame in 2019. Now we're bringing him back home to Lynn Classical to induct him into the Lynn Classical Hall of Fame in 2019. He had six seasons of more than 10 wins, and he finished his coaching career with 163 and 70 with a .712 winning percentage, the best in Lynn history. Let's give a big round of applause for Coach Matt Durgan. Thank you, everyone. I wrote a few notes. I'm not a great public speaker. Um, Mr. Crichton, you forgot the rest of your speech up here. Oh. <laughs> I know, I'm only kidding, uh, yeah, that was a joke. <laughs> I, I feel like Hillary Clinton at the debate and Trump kept circling her, remember? But you are right, he did have a lot of pages. I know. And Arthur, I didn't give out 88, one of the assistants did. So, we th I think we should retire that number, by the way. Right? What do you think? But I'd like to thank um, the committee for nominating me and uh, Mr. Devin, the athletic director, for um, all his support over the years, because he's been a good friend of mine. And I had an opportunity to work for two athletic directors at Classical, Mr. Rue, and lifelong friend, Bill Devin. So thank you, Billy. Um, congratulations to all the other inductees. It's a great honor to be up here. I have family members in the back that have sacrificed a lot of things from allowing me to coach. And uh, there's my two daughters, Molly and Maddie, my wife, Belinda. I'd also like to thank uh, Rick Arabino, and Nick Costin for uh, their support and loyalty over the years. I worked 25 years for um, uh, Ricky, and thank you, Ricky, for everything. 
And Nick Costin, thanks for hiring me. And after that first season, thanks for not firing me. <laughs> we were one in 10. We won our first game. We looked, hey, this is easy. <laughs> we were worried they were coming down for our keys right before the game on Thanksgiving. <laughs> So thanks, Nick, and Dr. Leonard for hiring. I'm also the opportunity to coach. Um, they're great friends and loyal supporters. At all, I just want to make sure I m make so. And Derek Dan had a leave earlier, and he coached with us. He's been an assistant coach with us for 20 years, and that's a long time. And he was loyal, and, and he had a huge impact on the kids. Great coach. And without him, we would not have been successful. But also, Robert Johnson coached with us for 10 years. Robin and I have been friends for years, and thank you, Robert. Uh, Jeff Newall started out as an assistant coach with us at Classical. He's gone on to be an athletic director at St. Mary's. He treated me, we're cousins, so obviously he treated me like family. He actually treated me better. <laughs> my family, <the laughs> and my family, if you pitch, you better be able to catch, so it's pretty brutal. Um, my first experience with Classical football, was my dad, Harold, who taught for over 30 years at classical. And uh, when I was a little kid, he used to bring me to the uh, Thanksgiving Day rallies, and it was huge back then. And that whole table back there, I mean, they were the Green Bay Packers. And to this day, they still are. I mean, that's by far the group of best athletes, the city of Lynn. There was a run that was unbelievable from the um, late, you know, 75 to 81, when Stu Primus and all those guys came through. So, the tremendous guys, thank you very much. Arthur, I mean, you were the bigger than life. And uh, that's why I wanted, then I got to go on, play, you know, play football, and I got to play for Coach Wise. And I wasn't one of those, those guys are superstars. And, uh, but I took as much away from Coach Wise as they did. And he was a tremendous coach, very intense, but he cared, he cared about you, he worked at it. And uh, to this day, probably why I went into coaching was because of Coach Wise. So thank you very much to Coach Wise, obviously not here. And, uh, and I want to just make sure, and most importantly, I want to thank the players. Because without the players, you don't win. And you can, you can practice, you can draw schemes, schemes. You know, it's X's and O's. It's about the Jimmys and the Joes. And we were fortunate. We had excellent, tough kids from classical. And uh, each time we took the field, those kids played their hearts out. And I will always be grateful for that. And I thank you all. And I see some guys in here. And, I play it. I don't want to mention someone and then leave someone out. And then, but this group, not like today's kids, they won't pout. So, thank you very much. <laughs> today's group, they they call their agent right after the game. <laughs> Coach Jurgen, uh, yeah, Johnny didn't get the, the 20 carries today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll be in Monday to negotiate. <laughs> and again, the things that make things successful in sports programs is the outside things. We always had great faculties, great administration, but the parents and the boosters program. And there's one guy I want to mention that I, who was tremendous, and uh, he was just a great guy. And uh, he ran our sports program even after his son had graduated, ran the boosters program. That's Keith Bransfield, and uh, <laughs> got to mention. Him. So, thanks, Dan. That's all I got. I appreciate it. I'm honored to be here. This is a great Hall of Fame and great night. Thank you. Hope I didn't take too much. Just on a side note, Matt Jurgen is uh, joining his father, Harold, that was inducted in the Lynn Classical Hall of Fame in 1999. So we now member with his father, the Lynn Classical Hall of Fame. We're almost there. Next individual was not a was not a graduate in classical, but he left a, a mark there that was second to none. Bill Frost, who was an East Lynner, will always tell you the best years of my life were spent at West Lynn at Lynn Classical. He said, and that's a lot to say from someone that lived and grew up in East Lynn. He was the vice principal at Lynn Classical for a number of years under the tutelage of Nick Costin. When Nick went down to downtown to the front office down there, Bill became the principal and he continued to excel for many, many years. We have a debt of gratitude to Bill for all the time and the things that he accomplished at Lynn Classical. 
He went on to become, I should say Dr. Bill Frost, let me address you correctly. Uh, he went on to become a college professor after reti he retired from uh, the Lynn School System and he started a scholarship in the Frost family name at Lynn Classical. Please give a big round of applause for a great principal and a big booster of Lynn Classical for many, many years, Dr. Bill Frost. Thank you, Dr. Dill. Alvin, where are you, Alvin? East Lynn kid, right? You stole my thunder. You stole my thunder. Um, this has got to be the largest gathering of the classical family I've ever addressed. And um, first of all, I think I have to both thank and congratulate the committee. And I'm glad that Chris Pisanelli is also getting a shout out here tonight because she talked me down off the edge many times, but I never had my tie get caught in a machine, right? So, and um, I am humbled, I am pleased, and I am proud to be inducted into the Lynn Classical Hall of Fame, which means I have some thank yous, of course. My wife, Jerry, of many, no, I shouldn't say it that way. We were married in 1969, so I'm not a math person, but I believe that means we have a significant anniversary coming up this year. And she had to put up with me all those years coming home and grumbling about the kids, the teacher, whatever. But uh, Jerry, thank you, I love you, and you've made uh, my life much, much richer. And of course, my two kids, Jeffrey and Allison, and they were the ones who got this started. I had no idea they were doing it, and they were the ones who nominated me. And uh, Jeff and his wife, Kayla, have presented us with two grandchildren, Harrison, who will be five next month, and Violet, Lady Vi, who is only five months old. They are our treasures. My sister Dorothy is here tonight. I believe she is still gainfully employed at Classical. And there is one other individual I must take a moment to thank, and that is Nick Costin. Nick is my, one of my oldest friends and certainly my oldest professional uh, associate. No, that's the wrong word too, but anyway. Uh, Nick and I do share a love of classical, that's obvious, but also I won't say an exclusive niche but um, it's rare. Both Nick and I, as of tonight anyway, are in two high school halls of fame in Lynn. And my uh, professional career was enhanced greatly by working with and for Nick Cossum. So Nick, I wanna thank you for everything. And, <laughs> Danny uh, alluded to this, and I will concur. Nick and I talked about this often, and we've held many positions, or did hold many positions in the Lynn Public Schools. Nick and I always agreed, and I think Gene, Warren, and now Amy will agree, that the best job we ever had in the Lynn Public Schools was principal of Lynn Classical High School. I wanna take this opportunity to congratulate my fellow inductees tonight and all the past inductees. Thank you one and all. Nice job, Bill. From the class of 1977, three sport athlete, had a great career, part of the legendary 1976 Super Bowl team. You see a lot of his teammates over there, Eddie Thurman, Art Akers, Darryl Murkison, the one and only Lou Reynolds, Kenny Green, Greg Meehan, what a team they had. So you talk about putting Lynn Classical back on the map. That team came, that was my first year coaching at Lynn Classical, so I have a special memories of it. That team came together and we just dominated everyone. We had great players, 
We had coaches from all over the country down there. As you know, Arthur went to UCLA. Okay, uh, junior guy got a full scholarship to uh, BU. Eddie Thurman went to Wake Forest and went to Holy Cross. Lou Reynolds played football at BC. Kenny Green, who's the head of the MPT Transit Police, was a defensive back and backup quarterback there, graduated from BU. We had some Danny Dufo who played for Atlanta Falcons. What a team we had. But one of the spark plugs, one of the guys that everyone in that team looked up to, when it was all said and done, he gave it his all every game, and he was one of the most admired players on the team, his junior guy. So let's have a... <laughs> Before Junior gets up here to uh, accept his plaque and have say a few words, I just want to note that Junior Guy is still married to his high school sweetheart for 40 years now. Let's have a round of for his wife, Carolyn. 40 years they've been married. How's everybody doing out there? First of all, I'd like to give a good thanks to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank my father, my mother. My mother's no longer here with us, but I know she's smiling down on me. My wife, Carol, as he spoke, spoke about, I got four of my grandkids here. I got 10 grandkids. I got four of them here. My daughter and my son's here. One of my daughter's not here and my look my teammates I love you guys yeah, yeah we had we had a, we had a, quite a run there so I'd like to thank the committee also and thank you I'd like to have a special round of applause also for junior guy he's a cancer survivor he had colon cancer three years ago, and he beat it. He's now clean, so he's a cancer survivor. Good job, John. From the class of 2003, I've had the pleasure of knowing this beautiful, successful lady for most of her life. I used to pal around with the mother over at Short Beach, and Christina, from when she was that high, was always there. And uh, she's a special woman. I'll tell you, she was a fabulous softball player. She dominated the Northeastern Conference year after year. Talk about the hard work at working woman. She got a teaching job in Lynn and went to Suffolk Law School for four nights Plus, she coached two sports. So talk about someone that was willing to work and sacrifice to achieve what they wanted. There's no better example than Christina, my host, Grenace. <laughs> she graduated from BU. Graduated from Suffolk Law School, and in 2017, talk about hard work, which Christina represents. There's no one that works harder than her husband, husband Stevie Grenace. I want Stevie to stand up and be right. Where is he? Come on, so he, there's no one that works harder than this guy right here. And also, I've known John, uh, Christina's whole family, CJ, her mother Helen, her father John. You couldn't come from a better family. Congratulations, Christina. Thank you. Now, I'm not quite sure why my husband was mentioned, but he did not go to Lynn Classical. <laughs> so good evening. I am humbled and grateful for this award. So first and foremost, I would like to thank the Hall of Fame Committee. 
About 20 years ago, my grandfather, who was my number one fan, also received this award. So thank you for allowing me to share this great honor with him. So I have in my hand a ball dated May 31st, 2003, and I do not have my contacts or glasses on, so Coach Warren, where are you? Oh, there you are. Okay, go. you move back down front. Do you know what this is? Yeah. This is the Reading Ball, okay? This ball has a great history, which I'm going to share with you tonight. So our softball team in 2003 had a rough start. I believe we won just over 50% of the games in the first half of the season. However, in the second half of the season, we went undefeated. Everything changed. Our bats were hitting, runs were being scored, double plays were being turned, and I, as the pitcher, strikeouts for me flourished. We won every single game in the second half of the regular season, which gave us a berth into the state tournament for the second year in a row. We were on a roll. So the year before in 2002 was the first time the classical softball team had a state tournament berth since I believe the Reagan administration. So we, lo we lost in the first round. So you can imagine that in 2003, when the, all the other teams, the regulars, expected us to be one and done once again. And they were wrong. We won the first round, which unfortunately meant that we drew Redding in the second round. Now Redding, they were not only a regular at the state tournament, but they were the softball giants. They were ranked number one in the state going into the state tournament, and we, the Lynn Classical Rams, weren't even ranked. They had not lost in 22 games. They looked at us as a mere bump in the road on the way to the championship. So on May 31st, 2003, we made our way over to Reading, with our coach, Chris Warren, reading to us a book by the name of <laughs> The Biggest Sports Upsets in History. In Reading, the stands were packed. It was standing room only, and I can confidently tell you I have never been more nervous in my entire life. So in the bottom of the seventh inning, we found ourselves up by one run against the best team in the state. Three outs, and it was over. Well, you can imagine, being the best team in the state, they wouldn't go silently into the night. With two outs and a runner in scoring position, we found their best hitter at the plate, and with a quick, quick swing of the bat, she lined the ball directly at me back to the mound, and I caught this ball right here for out number three. So we gave the number one ranked team their first loss in 22 games because we never gave up. We didn't stop, we didn't stop there either. We went on to win a couple more games and we played in the finals. So I have thought long and hard since receiving this letter informing me of this wonderful honor. What does this ball mean to me and why did I feel like I needed to bring it here tonight? Well, it's because this ball taught me how to slay giants. Symbolically, this ball taught me the meaning of the quote which Kevin Durant made famous, hard work beats talent when talent fails to work hard. And today, I live by that quote in my profession. I know, no matter how talented the hotshot opposing counsel with a degree from Harvard who works at some international law firm is, my preparation, determination, and perseverance will beat him. I would like to revisit the book that I mentioned earlier that Coach Warren read to us. What I didn't share with you is that he created a new last page in the book. It was the story of the Lynn Classical girls softball team beating Reading in a huge upset. He believed in us before anyone else did, and he taught us to believe in ourselves. And I will never forget that memory. So, in closing, I would like to thank Vice Principal, very well deserved, and former Coach Warren, Coach Kathy Ellis, Coach Lisa Newhall, wherever she is, I know you Durgans will tell her, <laughs> and Coach Terry Ward, as they are the ones who worked tirelessly, worked, it, worked with us tirelessly day in and day out and instilled the hard work and countless lessons into our young brains and never ever gave up on us. I would like to thank the greatest family and friends in the world who like, are the whole side of the table, or I should say high side of the room over here. Most Lynn Classical graduates, we all bleed green and gold. And last but not least, I would like to thank my poor husband, who Danny Dill already thanked, 
who is not, who's not fortunate enough to be a ram and bleed green and gold as the rest of us. And I remind him of that every day. But I just want to let him know that if he thought the stories of my glory days were bad before, they are only going to get worse now with this award. <laughs> So thank you for this award and allowing me to live these great memories with you. Thank you so much, Lynn Glasgow. From the class of 1974, I don't know how many people follow music in our group tonight, but the person we're honoring tonight, Brian Mays, has been at the top level for many, many years. He started in music back in Lynn Public Schools. He learned how to play the trumpet. He graduated from perhaps the best music school in the country, the, the Berkeley College of Music in Boston. In 1979, he toured with numerous bands over in uh, Europe. And then he was in a band that went on tour with U2 and he opened for them for a complete tour. On top of that, in 1984, he joined a group of former members of the band Boston, and they toured nationally uh, for, the, uh, for Aerosmith all over the country. They were the opening band for Aerosmith. He wrote a song called Until Your Love Comes Back Around, which was made at number 26 on the billboard uh, top 100. He then put an album together with uh, fellow musicians that was number seven on the Billboard chart. So if you want, he also toured Peter Wolf and his band all over the country. When it comes to music, the number one guy in the city, Lynn, in the North Shore, if you want to know anything about music, Brian Mays is the guy. Let's put our hands together for one of the most successful guys ever in the music industry in the North Shore, Brian Mays. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's, it's a great honor to be here tonight. I think um, we might all agree that the prevailing theme tonight is people believing in people. When I was in the third grade at the Callahan School, I saw an assembly in the auditorium about a person demonstrating musical instruments. When the man picked up the trumpet, something happened to me. I ran home as fast as I could after school. And I told my parents, please, can I play the trumpet? They had, a, they had a trumpet for me the next day. So I came up through the Lynn Public Schools and learned so much from uh, the tutelage of Frank Pagnotta, Louis Pascucci, had some great friends, but through it all, I played sports too. I wasn't a great athlete, but I will credit being, playing team sports as one of the things that has shaped my approach to life. My Kalina, my good friend, um, still blames me for breaking his finger because there's a second, <laughs> second string center who went too quick for Papuana. And, um, I rode a lot of pine when I, we played Pop One. I sat on the bench a lot. But talk about believing in people, there was a cheerleader who used to work my name into the cheers, even though I was sitting on the bench. <laughs> Her name was Patty Egnett, and that's Patty Fry, and she teaches at Classical right now. She's been my best friend since then. She's always believed in me, and she was uh, my photographer for many bands that I was in. She also recently, um, with the help of Billy Devon, got my daughter Madeline, who's at Classical, to sing the anthem for the football games because they believed in her. So I think that's a big part of what we're seeing here tonight is people believing in other people. We can do great things that way. And when I was um, in the band RTZ with the late great Brad Delp, one of the most famous and possibly one of the best rock singers of the 70s. He passed away and they did a tribute to him at the pavilion in Boston. And they were asking the group of us musicians who can step up in Brad's place and sing. Um, there's no way I really thought I could do that, but I said I could just because I didn't want anybody else to do it. 
So I did it. And I got up and I sang and in front of 10,000 people. And that taught me that to keep believing myself is going to help me be able to do what I love to do for my whole life. And I try to instill that into my daughter. And it's a v real great honor to be here with all these great athletes. And I'll never forget this. Thanks a lot. Good night. From the class of 1957, the legendary Dick Mag. He was a three-year starter in baseball and basketball. In 1963, he played for the baseball state champions in the state school league for Salem State. He coached in Lynn Classical from 1972 to 1995. He won the New England Northeastern Conference Championship in 1981, in 1983, he was a Northeastern Conference Coach of the Year three times, along with Frank Carey and others. He started the Clancy Baseball Tournament 38 years ago. He also was Kenny, Kenny Hill's coach at Lynn Classical for his whole career there and had a tremendous amount of input and help shaping Kenny's career. Let's give a big round of applause Class of 1957, Coach Dick Meg. <laughs> Thank you for that kind reception, and uh, you too, Danny Dill, for that. I, feel, I want to uh, thank uh, the committee and Danny for honoring me tonight. I'd like to thank my parents, Ruth and Herb, and my sister Joan, my wife Margie, my children Michelle, Tracy, and Kelly, and also my in-laws, Yvonne and Blackie Pileski, for their support and encouragement. I would like now to recognize some of the former coaches that, uh, that uh, inspired and influenced me. Ed Shubb, the first all-star coach in Westland in 1951 and 52. He also was the commissioner of Little League Baseball for 15 years. Nipper Clancy, coach of uh, Post 6 Legion, and my godfather in 58. Father Johnson, St. Mary's, who was my priest in 1958. In, in junior high school, I had Elmo Benedetto and Boley Danswitz for uh, basketball and uh, baseball. In high school, I had Herbie Brenner and um, Mel Palumbo in baseball and basketball. I also uh, had a fine coach that helped me out with Stick Champa, who uh, was uh, coached Babe Ruth, and Post Six. And, uh, and finally, uh, Jim Tuig, who coached me in baseball and basketball at Salem State College. I would like to uh, mention three coaches who went through one very tough some very tough times beyond the call of duty in the late 80s. Mike Burns, Mike Riley, and Tom McGann. Those were tough days coaching, very tough. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention four special players. Mike Ferrer, Ken McLean, Abel Marquez, and Jorge LeBron. Mike played two years and got into the liberal arts. Kenny played two years also and fancied uh, computers. Abel was a four-year player, and he was off to the University of Maine for football and baseball. George Jorge, also a four-year veteran, was on his way to Circuit Heart College or Salem State. Unfortunately, 
Their lives were cut short due to an automobile accident just after leaving a wake for a former teacher, Fred Latour, in early uh, August of 1991. They were great kids uh, to work with in, in, in tough, tough situation. They'll truly be missed and remembered always. God bless them. Finally, uh, I think I have a pr pretty good uh, guardian angel watching over me, letting me be honored with these super, super Hall of Famers. Thank you. Last but not least, from the class of 1966, when I was growing up in Westland, I went to school with his sister Kathy. I knew his brother Kevin, his brother Chris. You know, there's someone that's four or five years older than you. You always, uh, you know, you always say that's the toughest guy I've ever knew. And that was Jimmy Rooney growing up. Everyone was, everyone was afraid of him. He, he was a tough guy, serious-minded, and you know, you, you didn't think t you would never get near him if you could av avoid him. He was a hockey player at Lynn Classical. You know, some of our previous Hall of Fame inductees, I said to him, you know, I feel like I'm missing someone that hasn't gone in yet as a hockey player in the Lynn Classical Hall of Fame. And all three of these guys said to me, is Jimmy Rooney in? And I said, no, he's not. They said, you know what? After he graduated from high school, he went in the GE, and then he signed up uh, for the Army and did two tours over in Vietnam. Jimmy, thank you for your service for your country, for your two tours over in Vietnam. <laughs> when, he, when he left the war, uh, rather than go back to the GE, he became a police officer, and he was a motorcycle police officer. He worked there for a number of years, uh, retired a while ago, and uh, he did a day, great job at that, and we, he was one of the most respected guys I've ever met. Please put your hands together and welcome Jimmy Rooney to the Lynn Classical Hall of Fame. I just want to thank the uh, board of directors for voting me in. Uh, this is a great privilege uh, and honor. And uh, like I said in my uh, s summary, I played for the best team Classical ever had in hockey. Two of my line mates went on to be captains at their prospective colleges. I was scouted by the Bruins when there was six teams in the H NHL. And I'd like to thank my family member, members, um, my brothers, Chris, Kevin, and my girlfriend, Nancy, of 20 years, and uh, her son and his wife. And most of all, I want to thank my buddy, Stan Curveball Coolen, for being here with his lovely wife. Thank you, thank you. That concludes our program tonight. Let's have one more round of applause for this year's inductees. What a great group we had going in. One more round of applause. Thank you for being part of this special night. If you want to recommend someone for the Hall of Fame, Talk to Billy Devin, talk to me. We're always looking for recommendations from f former classical people, men and women for the Lynn Classical Hall of Fame. Have a great night. Thank you for coming.